Okay, so the next thing we want to look at for the sequences uh, that we've um, been studying so far is we uh, uh, look at another uh, way of checking or testing for convergence. A very useful uh, concept is that known as the squeeze theorem. Uh, the squeeze theorem basically, I'm, I'm just gonna, I've, I've got the statement of the theorem here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through it so that you also need to understand how to read uh, uh, technically theorems. So it says, suppose that a n, this one here, n equals n zero to n equals infinity, and that there is another sequence b n, n equals n zero, n zero is some starting point, to n equals n uh, infinity, are both convergent sequences that both converge to the same limit l. This is very important. Both a n and b n converge to the limit l. Then if there is an integer n one, there, n one, greater than or equal to n zero, such that for all n, greater than or equal to n1, okay, cn, a third sequence, is between an and bn, and it's bigger than an, but it's less than uh, bn. Then we say that cn, n equals n equals 0 to n, n 0 to n, n infinity, converges to L2, okay? So what does that mean? It means that basically you have cn, which is uh, an nth term or a sequence, an uh, nth term of a sequence, and therefore the entire sequence for all n is between a n and b n. And clearly, if that's the case, that means that you have essentially um, sort of this situation. So, if we were to draw the graph of a a n, for instance, okay, so we would get suppose convergence to L, and say here we we have. This is your L here. So it seems to be converging to L. And this is, let's call this one A N. And there is a B N that is also seems to be converging to L. Then if we have now this C N, and it's in red, and of course, it can go up and down, it can do anything at once, but it has to be between a n and, sorry here, this is b n. So what I'm saying is that the c n, which is the red one, okay, is squeezed between b n and a n. Then what is the only possible result that c n could have? it will obviously also go to the same limit, L. So that's what this theorem is saying, that if you can find two sequences, um, a n and b n, that both converge to the same limit. Now look, it's very important. That's a very important part of the statement. Both converge to the same limit. They must converge to the limit L. That means a n and b n both will have to converge to the limit L then as long as at some point, this n1 greater than n0 means that at some point, it doesn't have to be the first point, it doesn't have to start at n0. Suppose the third point, the fourth point, or the fifth point, whatever it is, cn is between an and bn from then on. In that case, uh, then cn converges to L2, or L also. So that's what the squeeze theorem is saying. Now let's look at an example so we can try to use this uh, theorem. So we want to apply the squeeze theorem to sine n over n squared from n equals 1 to n equals infinity. So this is our sequence, n equals 1 to infinity. And now we want to use the squeeze theorem to try to do this. Well, let's go on the side here and let's look at what can we start with? Well, the easiest thing to start with is sine n itself. We know something about sine n in terms of inequalities. We know that it is between minus one and plus one, right? For all n, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, this is true for all n, okay? And here I'm gonna continue to use this symbol for all. It looks like an upside down a. So it's uh, it's true for all n, okay? This This is a, we know this for a fact. Now if we divide both sides by n squared, then we end up with sine n over n squared, but then that means here you have minus one over n squared and here you have one over n squared. So now we've got 
the, the sequence sine n, well, the nth term of our sequence, sine n over n squared, between minus 1 over n squared and 1 over n squared. And this is true for all n. Uh, in fact, it's true for all n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So this is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So if I go back here for a second, you see this here, n greater than or equal to n1. This is the n1, in fact. So now the question remains, now the question remains, if we can test these two sequences, because you can think of this as two sequences, 1 over n squared and minus 1 over n squared. Now if we can somehow now check these sequences, uh, we know that, uh, well, what we have to do is we have to look at their limits. So the limit of uh, minus 1 over n squared as n goes to infinity is clearly 0. And also the limit of 1 over n squared is 0. So there's your, so there, that means that both the limits are 0. So both your L in this case, okay, I'm going to go side here and say, so L is 0, okay? So this is the L, this is the L that we're talking about, okay? This L is now 0. If this limit is 0 and both of them are the same, that means that sine n over n squared, because it's squeezed between the two sequences, 1 over n squared and minus 1 over n squared, must also converge to 0. Therefore, therefore we say, therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit, assume that the limit, most likely as n goes to infinity of a n, is also equal to zero, and I'll just leave that as an extra, um, uh, an extra theorem, an extra idea for you, an extra rule to keep in mind that sometimes it may be a good idea to use uh, this. And here I'll show you, for instance, an alternating sequence. So this is an alternating sequence that alternates sign between minus one and plus one. So here uh, I can easily do the following. I can take the limit of the absolute value um, of minus 1 to the n over n, which is really just the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, and that's equal to 0. So, and that's a convergent sequence. So you see, by just simply using the fact that the, um, by just looking at the absolute value, I can prove the convergence.